How's it going everyone? This is To Live and Die. I am here with another game between Scarab and this time he is playing Golden Mule in this one as you've noticed with uh, my YouTube channel so far. Uh, lately I've been, uh, you know, people have been giving me replays but lately it's just been this uh, Protoss player named Scarab. He has been a, uh, a good friend of mine in this in StarCraft 2. He's been around my tournaments a lot. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and press play here. Sorry, I had the uh, thing open so you can see how long the video was, or the, how long the game was, but oh well. Close that up. Anyways, um, yes, I am the uh, Zeke officer for the uh, North American StarCraft II community. And uh, some good news with uh, Zeke.com is we just, uh, Zeke, the developer for Zeke.com Lane, or Lux, as you might know him on Zeke, uh, he just released Group Stage. Uh, system so that you can actually perform group stage events now and which is great news for those of us who like tournaments and like different formats that we can use and group stage is definitely a must in the uh, tournament uh, world uh, you need you definitely need a group stage at some point to see who the best is instead of just an open bracket or a regular uh, bracket but anyways back to this game we have scarab here our red protoss in the upper right we have golden mule Great name there, by the way, original. <laughs> Our uh, blue Terran here in the lower left. And this is, the map is GSL Daybreak. As you can see, the two-player spawn locations here in the lower left and upper right. And then we have a uh, natural that's kind of open for both uh, spawn locations because you have this front part that has a half a ramp and you have the side entrance over here that the players can uh, attack from. So, uh, yeah, this... The, the path to your opponent's uh, base is not direct on this map because in the middle of the map you have rocks that are blocking the very center. So you have to kind of go around and zigzag the long way. We have SCV now getting into the base of the Protoss. As you can see, we have no scout for the Protoss just yet, so the SCV is going to see everything that's going on. In fact, he's going to see that a gateway did go down and not a fast forge. So he's, Terran's going to be happy about that for now because he knows that the Protoss is not going to go uh, something really fast. Although, the Terran does have a proxy barracks in the lower right of this map. And this is in a very secluded area, as you can see. Uh, this is not anywhere that the Protoss would scout first. You know, he would have to actually go around uh, this, like, you know, hole in, the, in, in this uh, particular map right here and come around and find this. But no, because the Terran is over here, the Terran places the barracks on this, on the right side of the map, and therefore it's not in any direct uh, scouting um, destination that the uh, Protoss would go in. So anyways, uh, SCV is going to come up here. It's going to put a bunker right down on top of the ramp here. And we're going to check out the Protoss vision real fast. He cannot see this bunker. The Protoss cannot see this bunker. He has no idea that it's going down. In fact, there's nothing that's going to come out here to see that this bunker is going to go down. So we have a proxy barracks, a, a proxy reactor, I'm sorry, a proxy, proxy tech lab barracks. And uh, he's going to be able to pump out uh, mar marauders. And if they get inside this uh, bunker, that spells bad news for the uh, Protoss. Anyways, here comes a stalker. He now sees the bunker. <laughs> that's in his base on top of his ramp. He gets the SCV inside the bunker. He's going to march a Marauder up the ramp. Here we go. Marauder's attacking the uh, Stalker. Uh, and you know what wins this battle, right? The st Marauder's going to win this battle. There goes the uh, Stalker down. In goes the Marauder with the SCV. Now comes the SCV out. He has to repair the bunker. And there we go. The uh, cheese, I guess you would call it, is now on for the... Uh, Terran here. Uh, meanwhile, back home in the Terran base, he does have a uh, bar barracks that's rallied over to the Protoss base, as you can see, and he just has his uh, supply, uh, so yeah, supply depots being built inside of his base, and that's it. That's His whole build is based on this react er, uh, tech lab barracks working and getting these marauders inside this bunker so, he, so that he can cont totally contain this Protoss. Protoss does have two gates down, and does he have Warp gate. Yeah, he's almost got warp gate now, so he will be able to warp units outside the base as soon as the warp gate technology is done because the Protoss has a uh, pylon that's being warped in here in the upper left of this map. Alright, another bunker is going to go down. So double bunkers inside the Protoss base. This is very sneaky by the Terran. If the, if the Protoss puts anything up here next to the uh, ramp, then the Terran does not do this. But because the 
Protoss decided to put his buildings in a little like SimCity design around his Nexus, he was not able to detect where that bunker was going down. Anyways, uh, we are now warping in a Twilight Council at this uh, proxy pylon. Or at this uh, hidden pylon, as I guess it would be, since the Terran hasn't found it. So at this this kind of forward pylon-ish place, he's putting out a Twilight Council, which will he will be able to put down a dark temp, a dark shrine next to it. So we'll see what happens here. Third bunker going down now for the uh, Terran. Terran is now making another barracks, so we're going to have three barracks here. To remember the proxy barracks over here to the right, and two more barracks are going down inside the base. Protoss has a third gateway that just finished. He does have one, two, three, four stalkers, five zealots sitting right here, as you can see. So a third bunker goes down. He's going to be able to put all of his ground army inside these bunkers, no problem. Loads up two marines and a, and a marauder in that bunker. He has two two marauders in each of these bunkers. So, yeah, he has a very sizable force here. You know that this the Protoss army is not good against this. You know he has to really watch what what he does against these bunkers because the the bio of Terran eats up the gateway units of the Protoss. Anyways, uh, he is putting down a dark shrine. This is how you come back for, as a Protoss. You have to put your dark shrine somewhere that the opponent doesn't see it. <coughs> and get your Dark Templars out in a hurry. All right, so the bio of the Terran is now wreaking havoc inside the Protoss base, as you can see. A lot of havoc going on here. And as you can probably hear. <laughs> so as soon as that Dark Shrine gets done, he's gonna be able to warp in D DTs, and here they come. The DTs are warped in. The Terran is probably going, where in the world is your Dark Shrine? Hello, Dark Shrine. I don't see a Dark Shrine. Is this really happening to me right now? Oh, and this Marauder just goes down to the hack of a Dark Templar. And here we go. Here's a Dark Templar that warped in at that forward pylon. And he's going to be able to start hacking away at this uh, uh, one of the uh, supply depots, which will go down very fast. And he was able to, the Terran was able to kill that Dark Templar, wow. Uh, he's going to have another one inside of his base soon here. In fact, the two Dark Templars and the Stalker are marching across the map. As we take a look at things, uh, the barracks is now on its way back. He's going to fly the barracks over. I don't think this is in time. He's going to have the, the Protoss is going to have massive amounts of Dark Templars here in the front of uh, the Terran's base. He needs to put down a uh, turret there. Okay, there's a turret down at the front of his base. Good. So we did get an engineering bay down, as you can see, right here. And he's going to get a factory down. And he does have the, the two barracks already down. He has a command center that's being made. And he's going to fly his other barracks over here. Uh, as you can see, the uh, little silhouette of it. All right, so he warps in. He uh, morphs his Dark Templars into Archon. So now the uh, Protoss can uh, transition uh, into an Archon play. He does have a, another core going. Now remember the uh, bio of the... Uh, Terran took out the core. <laughs> uh, let's check out the uh, unit kills count. 12, un 12 um, uh, probes were killed by uh, Golden Mule. Look at the army count here. 16, er, 18 to 18 is dead even army wise. If you look at the uh, worker count though, 32 to 20 in favor of the Terran. Remember the Terran is flying a command center over into the natural right now. The Potos is not going to have a natural yet. You don't see any being built as you can see. Archons and two Stalkers here now, and, a, and two Zealots are now going to try to wreak as much havoc as they can in, in, inside the natural. In fact, they wipe out a lot of uh, SCVs. 13 SCVs to 14 SCVs now are killed uh, by the Protoss. Oh man, these Archons are doing massive damage here. All, we're able to get damage on this uh, uh, command center, and Golden Mule leaves the game. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Talk about split decision making by the Protoss to get that dark, the uh, Twilight Council down and the Dark Shrine down proxied. And to get Dark uh, dark Templars in his main to help uh, eliminate the army. Otherwise, that, that uh, Bioball army inside the uh, Protoss base, that's it. You know, when you have that kind of a, a Bioball uh, Terran army inside the Protoss base, you know you're just basically going to be able to kill every building. But he got the Dark Templars warped in just in time and was able to come back in that game that he should have lost. Alright everyone, that's your 
Protoss versus Terran Games, Scarab versus Golden Mule on GSL Daybreak.